Hello, this is Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're going to talk about Raylib. Now, what you may ask is Raylib, well, it is a very beginner-friendly, uh, C-based, obviously C++ compatible game framework. And the thing I love about uh, Raylib is it's probably the most easy and accessible um, way to learn C programming for games uh, that exists today. And that's saying something. It's actually one of my biggest turnoffs for people starting with C++ is that getting up and going is a pain in the butt. Configuring the linker is a pain in the butt. But figuring out the compilation process is a pain in the butt. And of course, you know, learning your libraries on top of the language is a pain in the butt. Well, Raylib does a very good job of addressing a lot of this. And I mention it because Raylib 1.8 was just released. Uh, as you can see here from the announcement on Reddit's our game dev forum, um, Reddit, Raylib 1.8 included procedural image generation functions, parametric mesh generation functions, uh, PBR, physically based rendering, uh, material support, and improvements to the uh, Android build pipeline, RLGL model update, uh, Ray Math Library has been reviewed, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the big things here is your procedural image generation, your procedural mesh generation, and your PBR material support. And what is Raylib? Well, it is live, available at www.raylib.com. I actually did a video on it already. I will link that down below, as well as the Raylib website right here. Um, head on over to raylib.com and you can go ahead and download it right here. Now you see you've got two options. You can either donate or not donate. If you choose to not donate, it'll bring you to this file. Go ahead and click download. And it's a very small package. Basically, it's 83 megabytes all told. Now, the nice thing with Raylib is it actually bundles in all of the tools you need, including a custom version of uh, Notepad++ configured and ready to go. So here, we'll go ahead and run the installer, and you'll see what I mean. All right. Yep. Now, one thing I find very annoying with Raylib, and this is something you can change after the installation is done, but by default, it installs to C colon slash Raylib, and you can't change that. Now, you can move the files after the fact, but you can't change it as part of the install, and I do hope that gets addressed, because that is irritating. All right, so we'll go ahead and open that up. Now, what, here's what you're getting when you install Raylib. MinW, um, MinGW, which is a Windows version of the GCC C++ compiler, uh, Notepad++, and then uh, various different files. And if you really prefer, you've actually got uh, Visual Studio projects, so you can work with Visual Studio instead of Notepad++. And we'll go ahead and do this install. So you're seeing there, it is being installed to unfortunately C colon slash Raylib. And We'll give the installer a second. Here we go. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth with Raylib, but I do want you to see uh, why I find it so uh, approachable, especially if it's C or C++ programming that you want to get into. So fire that up. The install is now done. Raylib is up and going on your computer. Uh, go in here and fire up a copy of Notepad++. Like so. Now you see here in Notepad++, you've got the documentation at the top here basically saying you can go ahead and run this code by hitting F6, which is what I'm going to do. And you see here is the execute command. Go ahead and let that run. And your code is up and compiled and done. So it's really that simple, that addressable. And you know, basically, you don't have to worry about compilation. It's handled the logic and the GUI, uh, the, the glue, all of that stuff together for you. Basically, it's given you a pre-configured compiler, an environment, and a whole lot of examples to get you started. And you're off to the races. Basically, you come in here, you type your code, and um, you know F6 runs it. And that's about as simple as it gets. So for example, if we go and run one of the other examples, so open up, so we've got various different examples, like so. Uh, we'll do one on models. So there's 3D support in this guy. And we'll go um, mesh generation. I've got no idea what this guy does ahead of time. But once it's loaded, again, just hit F6 to run it. You see you've got various different options down here. But what you want to do is compile and execute. Click OK. And there is your example up and running. So this is probably the fastest, most approachable library out there. Now, why do I like it in terms of beginners beyond the fact that it's a pre-configured environment for you? Well, that goes back to here. So let's go on back to the Raylib documentation or the Raylib forum. Um, let me see if I can find the, the documentation quickly. I'm going to pause so you don't have to watch me stumble for this. Well, first off here, we'll do a top level overview of the Raylib architecture you can see here. So basically underneath it, um, you've got, uh, where did it go? 
there we go. So you have OpenGL and OpenGL ES as underlying technologies that provide you know the, the graphics, etc., for the RayLib architecture. You've got the Ray Math Library, which you can use on your own. Uh, you have OpenAL for audio support. And then in the middle here, you've got RLGL, which is this uh, Ray Library GL interface, which you can also use on your own. You, you don't need to use any of these modules that are built over top of it, but you see here, um, there is a number of things built over top. You've got your core, which can camera and some gesturing, uh, texturing text, shapes, models, shaders, and audio. So those are our helper functions that are built on top of it. And then on top, we've also got easing library, GUI library, and a physics library, or I think that's what that is. So anyways, you've got uh, all these things kind of layered on top. Now, the cool thing again is you can actually use just this layer. So if you want a more accessible, uh, easy to use 2D version of OpenGL, uh, RLGL may be the right choice for you. But you can start off using all of it and drop in, drop out what you actually want to use. Now, here is your documentation. And this is really all you actually need to learn it. And this is where it gets really impressive. So all of the functionality available here is basically documented here. And it's very straightforward. It is what you, th you think you're going to need. You've got uh, simplified file management code in here. Uh, you've got your input code for handling you know, game pads, keypads, mouse pads, touches, um, gestures. You've got your camera related code here. We've got uh, built in primitives for drawing shapes geometrically. Um, about as easy and straightforward as it gets. So you want to draw a pixel on screen, you call draw a pixel where you want it to draw, and then the color to draw it at. It's, it's a really, you know, that simple of, a, of an interface. And we come down here, we've got your textures uh, for, you know, drawing your sprites on screen um, or generating textures or, or dynamically drawing textures. You've got text code so you can uh, draw fonts on screen. The cool thing is it actually ships with a couple of TTF fonts that you can use royalty free in your game, commercial or otherwise. Um, You've got models code for basically doing uh, primitive 3D work. Uh, there's no animation library in there. That's about the only thing that's missing for the most part. Um, you've got shader libraries that make it so that if you want to do GLLS, uh, GLSL shader programming, uh, this gives you kind of an interface over top of it. And then you've got an audio library, which is, again, it's as straightforward as it gets. You know, a load sound, play sound, unload sound. It's really exceedingly straightforward. And then just basically, um, documentation of the various different structs that are used and the various different colors that are predefined and that's it that is all you need to know to get working with raylip so basically you can print this guy off throw it beside you and get going creating games almost instantly and pretty much everything is as intuitive as it gets and then on top of that there is a huge amount of tutorials available or sorry uh, samples example uh, available as we saw um, earlier on when i was choosing a different one so you come in here you know there are you know, half a dozen in the model section. And then on top of that, we've got, you know, the core, others. See here, an Oculus Rift example, um, 3D camera, for example. So do a first person 3D camera view. And then once again, just load it up. Oops. Oh, close down the existing one. Load it up, press F6. And there is your example running. So it is probably the easiest to learn C library I've ever encountered. So that's pretty big praise for this guy. And that's why I keep paying attention to Raylib when there are new releases. And it's actually one of these things. I actually intend to do a tutorial series or a mini tutorial on creating a game using Raylib. It's definitely on my to-do list because this is just, it's a straightforward, simple, um, good design for teaching and learning uh, game library. It's one of the best I've seen. So that is why I love Raylib so much and why I'm sharing it with you guys. So once again, um, down below, I will link to Raylib and I will also link to the earlier video I did that goes into a bit more depth. Uh, but anyways, Raylib 1.8 was just released. One thing I didn't really cover is the license it is under. Um, Raylib is completely free. Uh, it is released under... Oh, one thing to note, there's also complete bindings for the Lua language and the Go programming languages. And here we go. There's open source, free to use, code is available on GitHub. The license is BSD-like 
oh, it's the Zlib license. Uh, Zlib is one of the more permissive licenses out there. Doesn't put a lot of limitations on you, uh, so it's you know very game friendly, commercial game or otherwise. And that is really it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like and let me know in the comments down below if this is actually one thing that you're interested in seeing more of. I've actually thought about doing a game development using C++ um, tutorial series, basically for beginners. Here's C++ here. I'm going to teach it to you. And I was thinking about teaching it actually using Raylib because it does provide a whole lot of the functionality that just doesn't exist otherwise. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that somewhere down the road. And it was plates pretty full at the moment. But anyways, if you did enjoy that, please do click the like button. And uh, if you're into this game dev kind of stuff and you're not already subscribed, do consider hitting that subscribe button, notify button, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.